Okay, so since last episode, I've stuck the music back on. I get that you have different, like, it's hard to find that exact music befitting of the tone, but you really think that this music suits the tone we're at here now? I don't even know what this music would suit. Like a detective game, maybe? Something like that, it's like Sam and Max. That sort of thing. This, oh dear. And as someone pointed out, whoa, what the fuck happened there? Yeah. Okay, so I tried the middle mouse button, but it took her away as well. She has some serious waist problems. No one's waist quite works like that. And also her bikini is far, far, far too small. Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, we'll keep the music on. But we'll turn it down. And save all of your ears. That's why to keep that's why you keep your sandals on. Ah, my feet. Switching gears from walking to sprinting, I do large leaps to minimize contact with the sand and aim for the edge of the water. A few jumps later, I can already feel the heat dissipating. There is no way around this. If a beach was this golden and this sort of full of blue water, light blue water, it would like it would be full. No one would go to another beach for the sake of going there, oh, whatever. Unless someone like famous were performing there, I guess. But as we've established, they're not. The foam of the water meets my toes, and man, oh man, what a relief. Ah, much better. Hey, Dave, look over there. Did I, did I say I'd call him Shu? Yeah, probably. Davette points to her right. I definitely called her Davette, though. What it leads to is an arrangement of empty beach chairs, each paired with its own beach umbrella. Well, nice, thank goodness. The sun is roasting hot today, even with all the sunscreen she put on me, I don't think I'd leave here uncooked. Poor foresight on our part there. It's very dumb. It's, it, it's not poor foresight, you're just dumb. I'm sorry. Let's use those! I wonder if we could just use them. Don't they have to be rented? Oh god, are you going to be those dicks who keep sitting down on them and going, Oh well... When the guy comes over, we'll just pretend we didn't know we had to. Like, that's the first time he's heard that. He probably sighs inwardly every time he does. Oh yeah, that does ring a bell. I don't see anyone around to enforce that, though. Hmm, upon further inspection, some of them seem to be a bit worn down. With my palm shielding direct sunlight from my eyes, I notice that the cloth in one of the beach chairs is missing. They might be abandoned. The chair on the back only has the word frame. No cloth. Oh, well, like a vids, let's settle down there. I gear back into a sprint, this time beelining for the chairs. I am so glad this is short. Up close, the wear on the material became very evident. Yeah, these are most likely not being maintained. Lucky us, indeed. Oh, what the? I still can't help but look at her eyes and think to myself, what on earth is wrong with them? The sunscreen would still have kept most uh, kept us mostly safe. But this shade is definitely much more pleasant. We could have resorted to settling beneath the boardwalk if it came to that. Ha, ah, what a ghetto solution. Ghetto solution? Do people in the ghetto... I've never even seen anyone under a boardwalk or a pier, as normal people call it. Has that... Do people do that? Oh, I don't know, it might be that I've never looked. It might be that in England, they're over a sea, so you can't really be under one. Oh, well, hey, just saying. We both take out our beach towels and lay them over our chairs. I tuck my flip-flops under my chair and lay down on it. I perk up and try to do more thorough visual scout of the surrounding area now that I'm not being blinded by the sun. Far ahead, on the water, is a boat too far for me to tell what kind. Following the trail of the shoreline all the way to the horizon leads to our town. It looks further than it is. Along the middle of the shoreline, something catches my eye. People. David, check it out. There's some people over there in the distance. Oh? She follows the shore along the direction I'm looking at. Oh, it's true. We're not alone after all. Yeah, funny that. <laughs> it's a couple and a child, right? Yeah, seems so. It's still kind of crazy that we have a sizable chunk of the beach only to ourselves. Sizable? You have so much beach and there's no one here. This is that's not sizable. Sizable is like someone put an absurd amount of cheese on your pizza. Not gave you like twice the size of a normal pizza. 
The beach near our house has never been this empty. As far as I can recall, maybe it's not such an common occurrence in this one. I love how they're still speculating over why this is a thing. Maybe. But enough about that, I'm in the mood for a swim. What if we have lunch now? It's already time for that. Oh? Huh, now that you mentioned it, I am feeling kind of hungry. Of course you are, the plot did taste you be so. Sure, let's do that. Great. Is it going to be a new background? Of course it fucking isn't. I don't know why for any second there I thought it might be. That was kind of dumb. We both reach our backpacks again to get our food. I take out the pale ham sandwiches I made this morning. Inami pulls out a ball wrapped in kitchen towels and plastic wrapper boasting a familiar odour. What the hell? As she unwraps it, a hamburger is unveiled. How did you... what? I could swear the ranch is not open till 10am. I'm fairly certain we didn't pass by a fast food joint on the way here. Could it be that she got it yesterday and she's just a bit weird with takeaway food and thinks it's perfectly fine to eat it that far into the future? It's probably not that, but we can all dream, can't we? D did you get that yesterday? The gratuitous aroma of cooked meat patties and fries reaches my nostrils and triggers synapses of engraved memories. Glimpses of myself sitting beside her in random empty classrooms and alleyways while she mows down cheeseburgers. My body shudders just thinking about it. You see, David's kind of crazy for this stuff. She has a downright abnormal appetite for it. Uh, are they going to make some sort of reference to her figure and then try and make it because of that? You know, like... You know what I mean? Oh, well, and, and she never puts on the weight. And we can't explain that. Yeah, crumble, crumble, crumble. It's fine, though. Fat people are just a big butt. Cough. Because of her anxiety issues and because we hang out together all the time, she manages to coerce me into accompanying her whenever she goes to these places. If you saw what she looks like when she eats, you'd think she comes from a family of wild boars. Again, he's just thinking all of this, as you do, chilling. Like, videotaping her ravaging all that food would certainly make a powerful shockumentary. I regain consciousness and return to the inquiry at hand. That's a normal phrase you would normally think. Oh no, I made it at home. What the fuck is wrong with your eyes? That doesn't fit the aesthetic of anything which has happened. So, uh, thing is, sometimes I'm really in the mood for one, but the ranch is closed and every other restaurant is too far. So I started looking up how to make these and have been experimenting in the kitchen. <laughs> Alright, well I suppose it's better than the bedroom. This is my first big attempt and the results are looking good. And your mother supported you doing in this? She was asleep when I made them today and she says she doesn't know. I bring my palm to my forehead. She might notice parts of the meat missing, but I'll take care of that issue when the time comes. Why didn't you just buy your own meat? Did I miss something here? Is it that wrong that someone cooks for themselves? <laughs> no, you must only eat my food. <laughs> for now, time to see how I really did. Oh, good. There are sparkling around her eyes. After a suspenseful first bite, her mind visibly melts into dreams and sparkles. Because fuck proper art. She hypnotically chomps away at the hamburger. Oh. Uh, yeah, I got you one of these. I chuck her the grape juice I bought this morning. She gasps. Her eyes widen in clear surprise and she looks back and forth between the juice and my face while she finishes chewing what's left in her mouth. How'd you get this? I thought it was sold out. Nope, he still had the last one hanging around in the back. Enjoy. She looks at me with her mouth full and resists the urge to start bawling. Raw grapes don't do much for her, but for some reason she's absolutely crazy about this grape juice. Go figure. She was bummed out recently when she thought they had run out. Absolutely pointless two minutes of my life. Seeing her blissful expression brings a smile to my face. Appearing to have remembered something, she flips back and starts fumbling with her backpack again. Is this going to be one of those dumb moments, oh I bought a dildo, or something silly like that. After some struggle, she comes out holding another paper towel and plastic wrapper ball. Oh Christ, another one. Mm-hmm. She takes a couple sips of the grape juice to help slide the food down. Oh good, we're going back to this in no way reasonable anyway pose. I totally forgot I made one for you too. What is it? 
I made sure to cut back on the ketchup and mustard. I know you prefer it on the simple side. She wrap unwraps the burger and hands it to me. Between my sad looking butter and ham sandwich and this mouth-watering hamburger, I make up my mind instantly. I punch her in the face and tell her the hamburger is not fucking worthy. That's probably not going to happen. Biting into it, I can relate to her expression earlier. Bollocks, no. This is delicious. Bravo. Praise be to you, my hamburger goddess. That makes it sound as if I'm shaped like a hamburger. Nope, you're shaped like someone who can't draw bodies properly. I'm not that round. Nom nom. I take some more bites out of the bun. Delicious. Is this a children's book? Is this just my day out with fuck with X? Uh, hmm. Mr. Tagazu. I gulp down the leftover food in my mouth and start over. I stopped by Mr. Dave's shop this morning before meeting up with you and he told me what Shiori was up to. Oh? She says, oh, a lot. Apparently her senpai, oh, go fuck yourself. You randomly just used the word senpai. Her senpai. Is it a martial arts teacher? Is it a martial arts teacher? Because then it's fine. If it's not, that's completely out of place. Why would you use sen- uh. Taku weeby wank. Apparently her senpai is moving down from the block from us and he's, she's helping with the move. So that's what's keeping her busy. Explains why we haven't seen a trace of her the past couple days. I was going to invite her to come with us, but I couldn't get hold of her. She could have at least told me about it. Damn, that senpai of hers storming in with his blatant sex appeal and stealing away our friend. Haha. <laughs> it's not like he just came out of nowhere, though. He'd been getting closer and closer for like two years until the- TWO YEARS! Holy shit! I'm not the one who thinks that getting off with random people at parties is a good idea. I think it'll almost always end in regret and awkwardness the day after, and then you probably won't speak to the person after that. I think you do sort of need a little time of warming to the other person and to sort of chatting and chilling and so on, but two years! T two That's a long time. Imagine if that doesn't work out. That is a lot of time you've wasted. Oh. Until they officially started dating at the turn of the year. I know, but still, look at it from this angle. Once he's done moving, she'll have more time to hang out with us again. You're assuming he won't just cage her in his closet and drip feed her gummy bears. Hey, that sounds like an ideal life. I don't know why you're complaining. She would absolutely fall for it. Pfft, that's ridiculous, ha ha ha. I burst into an uncontrollable laugh and my reaction makes her crack up as well. No, she's not cracking up, she's smiling inanely like a twat. We must look like a couple of crazy hyenas. I hate it when people... Ah, uh, I actually despise it when people do that. I'm not going to describe the situation properly. I'm going to say what it must look like to other people. Uh, once again, good thing there's no one around to see us. Then the thought that had been bubbling around the back of my mind resurfaces. Hmm, oh yeah. What was it again that made you want to come to this beach again? Oh, plot. We're only 43 minutes in. You told me yesterday, but I've been blanking on what the reason was. Cuttlefish bone for Kiri, remember? Ah, right, the cuddle bone. Roll credits. That's what I was forgetting. Okay, that clears things up. And it explains why this beach and not the one closest to the complex, this one has no cuddle bone. Not sure what makes it so this one has it and not the other one, but that's just how it is. I could have bought some, but I'd have to go to... I'd have to go to pet shop. I have to go to a pet shop. I am Mongo. But I'd have to go to the pet shop in the city next door. The city next door? Did someone just give up on this sentence halfway through? Jesus. Next door to get some. Plus I have no idea how much it costs. The way we get to the beach and also get free cuddle bow. Win-win. If I remember correctly, it can be a bit hard to find. Even if we find one piece, it'll be a success already. I just said it'd be hard to find. It's not a... Whatever. Parakeets take a while to fully chew on them. We can spread out a little and search individually if it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, why do we need each other's company anyway? We're here for this one purpose and we are going to fulfill it even if it means we're miserable.